I feel like it's been a while since we created some graphic templates. So today we're going to be creating a YouTube banner template. Two things. One, the template will be available and accessible to everyone for free. And two, for those who want to skip the trouble of customizing it themselves, you can actually go to my Ko-fi page and commission my team to do it for you. You'll just have to provide some information. If you already have a logo, what image you want in there, what social media you want in there, and my team will take care of it in less than a week. But in the meantime, let's create it. All right. In order to make it accessible to everyone, I'm going to be using photopia.com or photopea.com. It is practically Photoshop, but free and on the internet. This is a website, photopea.com. It's going to bring you here. Now, once I'm done with it, you can directly go to templates and then type my name in the search bar. And there you will find everything that I've created and this is all free and you can customize all of that. But for now, we need to create a YouTube template. YouTube banners are actually slightly tricky to make because of the resolution. So this is where our good friend Google comes to save the day. I'm going to right click on this image, click copy. And now that it's in my clipboard, Photopia should know exactly what I want to do. And we have the correct dimensions here. I'm going to put 300 as the DPI, which is mostly just a habit. 72 will be fine too. And click create. All right. And from there, all I have to do is press control V to paste. Now those two big gray parts are basically never going to show up even on TV. So we're going to go ahead and basically block them. I'm going to click on the rectangle select tool and I'm basically going to click and drag. I'm going to leave a couple pixels on top of this. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard to add an additional selection and I'm going to click and drag again leaving a little bit of margin. Now at the bottom of the layer list, I'm going to hover over this and click on new layer. Then I'll choose the paint bucket tool, which is right there. And I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is something like black. Doesn't matter what color it is. Now I'm going to click once. Now I can press control D to deselect. We can now select our template, even turn it off. I like working with darker backgrounds. So what we can do is click on the background here and then pick a color by clicking on the primary color right there. And we want something like a dark gray. Click OK. And then we still have the paint bucket tool selected. So click once. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer again. And I'm going to head to the shape tool. So here, if I click and hold, I can see something called parametric shape. And uh, on top, you can find basically the number of sides that you want. So if you want a hexagon, you just put six. If you want the triangle, you put that's right, three. I'm going to click and drag. It doesn't really matter where, but I'm going to put it in the middle so we can really see it. And I'm going to hold shift just so it's straight. I'm then going to press P to select my pen tool and it's right there. And I'm going to hold control on my keyboard just so I can see the dots that come with this triangle. I'm going to click once. They should appear and they should be those tiny blue dots. Control plus to zoom in. And then I'm holding space bar to click and drag the screen like that. And you can see those little dots and I can hold control if I want to control them. <laughs> I can also hold control to select multiple like this and let go. Now I have those two dots that are selected. I'm going to control minus to zoom out, holding control on your keyboard. I'm going to click on one of them and then I'm going to drag it down. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, it's better if it's not perfect. Maybe we want the angle to be something like that. I think that's nice. On the top left, you will have the options for the shape that you just created. If you would like a fill, for example, you can click on solid color. It's going to fill it with solid color. Let's go ahead and basically pick our color scheme right now. Let's go with blue. I am choosing blue. You can choose whatever color you want. Blue is just the one color that I tested and that seems to have a better response when it comes to my audience. I wonder why. Let's click OK. And you can see it has it has this outline, but we don't want it. So we can click on stroke here and then click on the X to delete the outline. Now we're going to duplicate it. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either go to the layer list and while the layer is selected, you can hold alt, click, drag up or down and it will duplicate it. If I go to my move tool now and I move it, you'll see that there's a second one. But we don't want to do that yet. So while the second one is selected, press P again to bring up the pen tool. Same thing we did before. Hold control, click once. You can see the little thingies. <laughs> this time we're not going to select anything. We're just going to click and we're going to drag just a little bit. What I'm doing here is basically modifying the shape just slightly so that I can have a different color on the one underneath. All right. So in order to change the color of this, we can either go up top here and pick the color or we can also double click on the icon as long as it's a shape. There we go. I'm going to go to a deeper blue. Maybe that's not bad and click OK. Now, why is it not visible? Because the one that I just modified basically covers it. So we need to switch them places. Just click, drag up. 
there it is. That's not exactly what I wanted, but that still works. So I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to start placing them. I held shift in order to select them. Control minus to zoom out and you can press control T to transform or control alt T if you're not full screen like I am. And we basically want a bunch of arrows that are going to be pointing towards the center, right? Like this is nice. But now that we have this big shape, we can actually rasterize them. So right click on them, click rasterize. That basically turns them into pixels and they're not shapes anymore. Right click again and click merge layers. Now they are all one layer. I'm going to press V to go back to my move tool and alt drag to duplicate. Control T and it's a matter of hovering around the corners to rotate. You can also, of course, like make them bigger, even hold shift if you want to stretch them. And uh, let's keep doing that. On that last one, I'm actually going to show the whole thing. I'm going to control T, stretch it out to be a decent size. Control plus to zoom in. Nice. So we did one side. I'm actually going to merge all of them and then I'm going to duplicate them to the other side. So click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one. All of them are selected. Right click, merge layers. They're all one layer. Control minus, hold alt, drag up, duplicate. Control T, right click, flip horizontally, and then just drag to the side. Press enter. And that's pretty nice. Now let's spice up the background so that it's just not a flat gray. I'm going to click on the background. I'm going to click on new layer. And I'm going to select the brush tool or press B. Then from there, I'm going to select a brush that is not the typical normal brush. I'm going to right click to find more brushes. Basically, I'm going to see what they have. Now there's a brush here called round noisy marker. I'm going to click on that. In order to find the brush properties, I believe we can go to here. Now we can get all of the properties. So what we can do now is basically make it more random. If we play with the spacing, for example, as you can see, you will click and drag and it will create space in between each dot In scatter. You can play around with the position. There's also tips dynamics, basically play around with this until you have something that looks like it's going to be completely random angle jitter. That's important. Then there's color dynamic that gives you a brightness jitter. So some of them will be lighter. Some will, some of them will be darker. 8% is cool. And then there's transfer opacity jitter. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to go to my main color here and I'm going to color pick that main blue because at this point, this is going to be our color scheme. Or actually, we should probably go with a darker blue. There we go. A deeper blue also like this. Click OK. Then uh, we have our new layer selected. Right click, make this pretty big. Look up your opacity up top. You don't want it to be 100% because it would look like this. It's not really bad, but <laughs> We want it to be at around, I'd say 30%. I'm going to make this a little smaller, let's say 300. Then I'm going to click and drag in a circular pattern towards the middle. Cool. Now I can make it bigger around 500 and I'm just going to do one swipe over there. One swipe over there. I'm not getting enough of the dark ones. So let's go to color dynamics and brightness jitter. Bring that up. Make the brush around 700, one pass over there, one pass over there, another pass, another pass, another pass. <laughs> Just for the sake of it, I'm going to click and move my mouse slightly in the middle. Come on. There we go. And do it again on this side. Cool. So we have some sort of randomness going on on top of it. I'm going to select the top layer. This is going to be like our left side here. I'm going to click new layer. I'm going to select my color to be an even darker one, maybe less saturated. And this time I want my opacity to be very low around nine. And I'm just going to do some passes too, just so I can have something affect those quote unquote triangles. It's going to take multiple passes since our opacity is so low, but we're going to have a very random effect, which is what I want. Click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. OK, so our triangles, I want to merge them together. So I'm going to select both of them, right click and merge layers. I want to add a zoom effect, a slight zoom effect, and I might have like a distortion effect to make it feel like it's pulling towards the middle. To do that, I'm going to go to filter, blur, radial blur, and we're going to click on zoom. OK, it's not really visible because it's already doing like the same shape, but we can play around with the size. 16 is nice. Click OK. Let's do the same thing with our background layer, with our brushes, radial blur, zoom. OK, now select the paint and we're going to do the distortion only on the paint. For that, we want to go to filter, distort and spherize. And then we want to drag that towards the middle. There we go. So it's like stretching towards the middle. You should probably introduce other colors here, but I'm keeping it blue just so that you can change the color easily later on. All right, let's do some text. Shall we? I'm going to click on the top layer here. What is that? Oh, there it is. Um, and I'm going to click on the type tool on the left here and I'm going to type my name. Actually, I'm going to pick the color first and we want to go white so it really stands out. Uh, we don't need the brush thing anymore. Just click in the middle here and type your name. 
your space 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 name there it is and then you can select it and up top here you'll see the size you can make it pretty huge select the font it's gonna be up there and uh, it's probably gonna take me a while so i'll see you when i find a font that i like All right, listen, we have some sharp stuff. I feel like this would match. This one is called Duplexide. Duplexid? Let's delete some of our spaces. I feel like this looks good. Pretty cool. Okay, we're actually gonna modify it a little bit. Make sure we select it. Nice, and up top here, with the font tool selected, we're gonna see Warp, and then there's Style. We can pick the style. In our case, we want something that is also pulling towards the middle. There's Bulge here, so I'm guessing negative bulge is the opposite. We're gonna lower the bend until we find that type of distortion. Exactly, so horizontal distortion, we can also play with that, but uh, let's not do that. And vertical distortion, I think we actually want a little bit of that. Not too much, but I feel like this matches pretty well. Time to fake some uh, 3D-ish effects on the text. Let's click on the move tool. Cool, let's center it. And with that selected, I'm gonna go to effects, effects, okay? And we're gonna click on drop shadow. This is where it's all going to begin. The first thing that I want is a drop shadow that will basically simulate in a way like a stroke effect. So it will be very, very tight and it will also be very sharp. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. There's a 3D button here. Let me turn off the drop shadow. I've never used this in Photopea. <laughs> Let's click on 3D. What? Okay, let's click on it. Oh, that is actually so cool. Let me put the angle at minus 90. Never mind. This just creates the 3D effect for us. Oh my god, Photopea is better than Photoshop. Lol. Pick the color again. I am so surprised. <laughs> and then we have a shrink effect. Oh my god, this is perfect. Oh, this is so cool. Alright, distance. There's darken. Let's try to play around with that. Uh, we even have the darken effect. Alright, reasons to use Photopea number 1000. This is great. Okay, let's add a drop shadow <laughs> to that and we can have a normal drop shadow. Let's pick uh, black as a color. Let's give it some distance. Reduce the spread to zero and we want the size to be very soft. Nice. And let's reduce the opacity. We can actually put this to multiply again. Reduce the opacity. Nice. So it really pops out. Let's see what it would look like with an outer glow with the right color of an outer glow. <laughs> this a little brighter, big size, not bad. Blending mode, we want that to be add linear dodge. Sorry. And let's reduce the opacity to zero and gradually bump it up until it looks, I don't know, natural. Decent. Uh, my blue is too blue, too sky blue. Nice. Now it looks like it's glowing. Okay. I can't believe we did that. Like, I can't believe they have a 3D effect. That's so cool. All right. I want to go to bevel and emboss just to test it. Make sure you click on it. Technique. I want that to be chisel soft. I want the size to be two and I want the shadow to actually be a dark blue like that. This alone could be your banner, but uh, we're going to add like a character in the middle. If you have a picture of you that you want, you can also do that. But let's find a character. I'm going to go with Crypto from Overwatch because I like him. I'm going to right click, click copy image, then back to Photopea with the move tool selected. I want to press control V. That simple. If that doesn't work, you can always download the image. This is the part where you decide if you want the character to be on top of the text or behind the text. If you put it behind the text, looks like that. If you still want like more space, you can double click on the T, press space. Actually, I realized I didn't put the paragraph to be centered. So I can select all of that and up top here. From now on, it'll be centered. I usually like it when the character is on top. So we're going to do this. And basically, I'm going to do something quote unquote special here. I'm going to put this character in a group and I'm going to add some effects to the character that if you drag and drop your own image into this, it's going to add the effects. But first of all, I'm going to control T to transform. going to make him a little smaller. I think he's pretty cool like that. Press enter. I'm going to actually delete his drone because it's bothering me with the with the name. I just press L for the lasso tool. Quickly select, press delete, boom. And of course, Crypto's color scheme is green and white, so it doesn't match. I'm going to press control U. This part is not supposed to be part of tutorial, okay? I'm going to go find green and then I'm going to play with the hue. Right, make it blue, make it blue, make it blue. And he blew. So that group, I'm going to control G, nice. Then I'm going to create an adjustment layer. I'm going to pick photo filter. I'm going to pick the color here. I'm going to go with one of the blues that I have. Click OK. Click, drag up, hold Alt to create a mask, basically a clipping mask. That means that this effect is only going to apply to the folder underneath it. I'm actually going to name the folder your pick here. I'm also going to add an effect to the folder. It's going to be both an outer glow and an inner glow. So outer glow like this, a little bigger and also inner glow. Pick the right color, make it a little bigger. I'm actually gonna add another adjustment layer just for the contrast. So adjustment layer, I'm gonna go with levels. I'm gonna bump up the whites a little bit, bump up the darks a little bit. 
make sure it clips and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> that's pretty much how you do it now i'm finally going to add a final adjustment layer all the way to the top to make sure that you can change the color of this banner so hue saturation you can double click on the little icon right there it'll bring this and then you can make it whatever color you want whatever color you want you want pink you got it you want red you got it orange you got it oh your color scheme is green nice turquoise whatever color you want you have the whole spectrum here i'm going to turn this off for now i'm going to turn on my template once more just to make sure that i'm not out of bounds i am not nice okay i'm not going to show the part where i add i'm going to add like some social media to the bottom here probably or to the top it's going to be part of the template if you want to customize it you're going to find it on photopia just go to the template section type my name again uh go to kofi.com slash get level slash commissions in order to commission it if you want someone to basically customize it for you but that is the lesson that is how you can create a pretty simple youtube banner design and it looks professional keep in mind that even though i said it in one color if you want to add more colors to the whole template stuff for example to the name you can click on the little arrow next to effect double click on 3d and you can just pick another color let's say that your color scheme is blue and whatever else matches right you can just pick the color make it match okay so basically this is the template that you're gonna get i'm gonna show you how you customize it so first of all the text you just click you double click on the t and you can type whatever you want my name is get level i can type l space level if i wanted to have uh, to be more visible i can just put more space in the middle and more space in the middle right i can move it around if i want to immediately change the overall color of everything i can go ahead and turn on the hue and saturation filter all the way to the top double click on the icon next to it okay it's going to bring up this and just play with the hue all right now it's purple if you want to put your own character Let's find another character. Let's go with this guy, for example. I'm gonna right click, copy. I'm gonna click on the character that's already there, turn it off, and I'm press Control V. Now I'm gonna Control Alt T since I'm not full screen. And I can just place them. And as you can see, the color immediately matches. So it's the same thing. If it's gonna be a picture of you or your favorite character, as long as it has transparent background, it's immediately going to match the banner. Okay? And once you're done, you can just click File, Export as PNG, click Save. And you can save it on your computer. Let's save another one. File, export as PNG, save, name it, then just upload it to your YouTube. Let's quickly do another character. Control V. Okay, so I clearly pasted it the wrong place. Just drag it into the group. There you go. And just magically, it uh, it fits. So Control Alt T, because I'm not full screen. If I was full screen, it would be Control T. You can just place them. And if you want a text to be on top, of course, you can collapse the group and just put it on top of all of the adjustment layers. Just like that. Export as PNG, save. And we did it. And just like that, you now know how to make a YouTube banner, where to find a YouTube banner template, and even how to get one made for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you next time. Go out there, make me proud, get a level, out.